What's up YouTube, ODST General back again, and today guys, I want to showcase an early in-development game called Starship Simulator. Now stop, don't run off yet. I know merely having the name Simulator in the title might scare off some of you guys. Given the track record of Simulator games isn't really that great, but I think this game is going to be different and I hope you will listen to why. But in order to paint the picture as to why, I need to take you guys back. Back to the year 2000, to a pre-Halo ODST, sat in front of my PlayStation 2, playing Star Trek Voyager Elite Force. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with Elite Force, this was a first-person shooter set in the Star Trek universe, on board the Starship Voyager and various other areas around it. This was a fantastic game for me, I loved the whole game. But my truly favorite parts of the game were on board the Starship Voyager itself. I loved exploring around the ship, watching the crew interact with each other, repairing damage on the ship, hanging out in the mess hall, talking with me, you know, just living their lives out. And to be honest, back then, when I was playing it, I felt like the ship was a real functioning place, like the AI had purpose, and it just was something that was a living, breathing thing in a sense. And. Since then, I've never really been able to recapture that feeling. It's stuck with me all these years. I still think back to Voyager Elite Force, and I still look back on it fondly. Now, of course, I just recently went back and replayed it to capture the gameplay footage for this video. And it's obvious, you know, looking back at it as an adult, the game isn't what I remember. You know, the, the AI interactions are very much scripted and they're they're very linear but it still leaves that feeling you know it still leaves that yearning i should say of what i want to see of this living breathing place now there have been other games since then that have kind of captured that feeling the elder scrolls games for instance have developed this even further ai actually have real jobs they have homes and schedules you can follow an ai through the course of its entire day and it will do something more than stand behind a counter as a static interaction point for a player. If you watch a shopkeeper for long enough, you can follow them home. You can see them sleep. You can see them go and uh, hang out and just enjoy their day. And you'll see them at their shop actually doing stuff and selling items to you, the player. Functioning in a world that's living and breathing with everybody doing that. It's amazing. But it's also not sci-fi. It, it's a fantasy game, and it's a fun game, I do like it, but it's not Star Trek, it's not Star Wars, it's not just science fiction, it's not set in space, it's not this future game, and that's what I really enjoy is sci-fi. So, we have other games, like Star Citizen, seeking to push the boundaries of immersion and interaction. And if you look at the teasers for Squadron 42, it really makes the Idris-class starship look in feel just like Voyager seemed to back in 2000. But just like Voyager was in 2000, most of that's an illusion. These AI that you see in Star Citizen, talking with the player, walking around, seeming to do jobs and stuff like that, aren't actually doing anything. If you sit at a counter and watch an AI in Star Citizen's persistent universe, that AI will never leave their desk. Multi-crew ships sit empty. And there really isn't any life or immersion in that sense in the game. Now, don't get me wrong, I like Star Citizen, but it's doing something very different from what Starship Simulator seeks to do. And Starship Simulator is what I've been waiting for for many years without realizing it. So on that note, let's actually talk about Starship Simulator. Starship Simulator promises not only expansive exploration with vast amounts of stars, planets, and alien civilizations that could take a full lifetime to explore, but it also promises a living, breathing ship and crew. Every person on the ship has purpose. Every panel of the ship serves a function. Players will step into a number of roles, tactical officer, engineer, captain, just as a couple of examples. You'll perform daily duties, living out life on a simulated starship. And 
the duties will vary from job to job and actually to show that off a little bit better I've got a picture up on the screen from Dan Gobier, the head developer for the project. So you might not be a rank and file member of the crew, you might not be some junior officer, you might be the head of engineering, but Starship Simulator will take you beyond the bridge of the ship. You will live inside this ship and while you're in the ship things will be happening all around you. And not only what actions you take, but those around you, the AI, will have an impact on the ship as well. Now if you follow an AI around for a shift in Starship Simulator, just like in The Elder Scrolls in Skyrim, if you follow that AI, you will see them carrying out their duties, you will see them eating, you will see them sleeping, and more. And that is great. It makes it feel really immersive, it makes it feel realistic, and it's fantastic. And that's really got me excited. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the ship itself. The ship itself has been built from the ground up, and designed in much the same way that a modern cutting-edge naval vessel would be. It's pre-constructed framework put together from multiple different pieces. The Magellan class is built from the ground up to actually use real physical systems. Uh, the ship will have wires and hoses and all sorts of stuff feeding through the walls, things that you can access and repair, things that there's going to be switches all over the ship that have, will have all sorts of different effects chained together in these complex systems. It's going to be crazy and fantastic. Now, right now, we've already seen the very basis of the system. It's still very basic in comparison to what it eventually will be. And already there is a great deal of complexity starting to form in this system. I spent a, a little bit of time, not a huge amount of time because it is still very basic, following around the wires on the ship from the reactor to a distribution panel, from the distribution panel to a panel that controlled the lighting and power of the ship, then from that panel to the actual lights, you know, to a, to a different control panel, I should say, and then up to the lights, going through, you know, walls and up over the ceiling, wrapping around, and you could follow the cables the whole way from the reactor and follow them around to exactly where they were going and see what those wires and cables were feeding into and understand it. And, you know, again, along that way, there's all that interactivity and connectivity in these systems, and it's very complex, very cool. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the realism of the ship and the game. Fleet Yard Studios, that's the development team, plans to marry the science and feel of shows and movies like Star Trek, Star Wars, and a dozen other sci-fi shows to real science as much as possible without sacrificing the entertainment aspect of the game. And so what I mean to say for something like that is, it's not going to be 100% ground in real modern science. You aren't going to see a part of the ship that's spinning around to generate gravity. They will have things like gravity plating, but they are going to ground that in realism as much as possible. The gravity plating will require certain, you know, aspects of uh, functionality on the ship to be operational. Otherwise, the ship might lose the gravity plating. Uh, if power gets cut out to that gravity plating, it can fail. Uh, same thing with the warp drive. They've got a you know, whole science behind it. These are maybe theoretical sciences in some cases, but it is just an absolute awesome thing. So, you know, that's a lot of stuff, and that's just scratching the bare surface of this game and when it comes to indie games and early access titles even many of the games and mods i've featured on my channel they make bold promises and many of them just often fail to live up or finish their projects you know they just can't carry out the promises they make fleet yard studios might not have any credit to their name but you might be familiar with their previous projects under different studios names stage nine and messy desk under the name Stage 9, Dane Govier and other members of the team were part of a team of developers, creating a loving and very faithful recreation of the Enterprise D from Star Trek The Next Generation. They worked on that project for about two years, give or take, before they were unfortunately hit with a cease and desist order prior to the release of the video game Star Trek Bridge Crew. While well, Stage 9 was closer to a 3D interactive tour rather than a game, it did really help set the basis for their next project which leads us to the Orville Interactive Fan Experience. This project is actually still in development under Messy Desk Interactive. While this is not an officially sanctioned project by Fox, they were given the go-ahead to create it and even given endorsements from the cast and crew. Messy Desk took what they learned with Stage 9 and cranked it up to 11 with the Orville Fan Experience. 
While it's still not designed as a game from the ground up, the team has tested many more game-like features such as functional missions, Steam achievements, and even competitive multiplayer. And now, Dan has gone ahead and he has taken some other team members and they've started work on Starship Simulator. So they're taking those skills they've learned with those previous projects with years of development experience in Unreal Engine, and they're putting them to the test in their own project here. And if their portfolio isn't enough to sell you on this game, to make you believe that they actually have a chance at completing this, and not only completing it, but doing it well. What if I told you this game is going to be free? That's right, no joke, the game will be free. Just like their previous projects, it will release out to the public for free with its open sandbox mode. Now, it will be supplemented with story-driven DLCs that will be a paid DLC system that will feature specific systems, aliens, and events that you'll be able to play through. And I've been thinking about this, and while this hasn't been written down and this might not be the case, just the way the game's systems are designed, imagine being able to replay the story in the role of not just one main cast member like a normal game, but from the perspective of every cast member. One playthrough, you're stationed on the bridge during a tense standoff with the alien antagonists, leading to a pitched and difficult battle as the tactical officer. And then the next, you're playing through as the doctor, dealing with wounded from that very same battle. You're not on the bridge, you're not firing the weapons. But that battle, that aftermath, it's still happening. It's happening differently because you're not on the bridge, you're not in that position. There's an AI up there instead. Maybe the battle doesn't go as well. Maybe it goes better. But you're going to be living that battle out from a different perspective and seeing the results of it. And that's just an awesome concept to me. That leaves so much replayability. Now, Starship Simulator is still very early in development, with its initial release not until sometime next year. But the development team is hard at work on the first playable demo. That will be available to the wider public for the upcoming format convention. Now, for those unable to attend the convention, the details of which are on the screen now, I will be featuring the demo on my channel as it is available to Patreon backers. With that being said, if you guys do support and back the game on Patreon, uh, you will have access to that demo build and other builds as they come out. In fact, there is daily updates to this game, or at least near daily updates to the game constantly changing it. I'm just amazed by how much this uh, project has changed over the course of two weeks compared to some of the other projects I follow which go months without this much progress. Now, to be honest with you guys, there's a lot of things I could talk about with this game. So much potential and so many things discussed and shared and, you know, thought about by development team and other members of the community. I could go on for hours, maybe even days, talking about every possible detail for this game. That's a lot of time and probably a little too much time for a video. So for the sake of time, I have decided to throw up a few quotes and images from lead developer Dan Govier and uh, just give you a better idea of what sort of game the team is seeking to make instead of rambling on trying to figure out what aspects of the game was best to cover. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed these quotes and I wanna go ahead and get ready to wrap up the video here, but uh, Hopefully I've gotten you guys even just a fraction as excited as I am for this project. I will of course be featuring continued coverage for it going forwards. However, I do recommend checking out their Discord and adding the game to your wishlist on Steam if you're interested in getting even more info on the game. Now let me know in the comments below guys, what sort of features would you guys like to see in a game like this? Alright guys, take it easy, I'll see you next time.